It's a great pleasure to welcome Shri Santosh Kumar Sarangi ji, Additional Secretary, Department of School Education, Ministry of Education, Shri Vipin Kumar ji, who is Joint Secretary, Adult Education, and DG National Literacy Mission Authority. We have eminent experts, Professor N.K. Ambasht, uh, who has been former chairman of NIOS and also have been in NCERT. We have with us Professor Nagendra Singh, who is in NCERT, RIE Ajmer. We have with us Professor Pankaj Arora, who is professor in uh, CIE, Central Institute of Education, Delhi University. And also we have here with uh, Mr. M.C. Worthing, Director, Adult Education Bureau, Department of School Education and Literacy. Dr. Shubhankar Mishra, who is Director in Charge, Directorate of Adult Education. Eminent speakers, members present over here, and all the listeners. It is a great pleasure to be uh, present over here when the world is celebrating World Literacy Day. This forum brings the eminent questions also to solve and under the ambit of sustainable development goals of uh, UNESCO, that is Millennium 2030 goals and on the onset of National Education Policy 2020, uh, we are here to discuss eminent issues which are related to literacy mission. Literacy has a long history from the period of caves where uh, the Paleolithic man and uh, other persons who were writing on the caves, uh, walls of caves to the era where we have thousands of languages and hundreds of scripts. So in this uh, ambit and in this backdrop of languages, scripts, yeah. and uh, direly needed uh, increase of literacy rate globally, not only in India, I think this forum will try to discuss and also try to address various questions where uh, we have to cater how to make pathway to achieve the sustainable development goals. Last one year uh, was a learning experience for all the teachers and also people of academia where we used to discover various ways to be digitally acquainted digitally literate and also the learner and the academia people of academia we are trying to sort out the issues various psychological issues were also arose and various initiatives have been taken also from the apex body and also ministry of education where the digital divide was we tried to bridge the gap and also bridge the digital divide. So uh, today we are here to discuss various things. Uh, I would like to invite chair uh, of this session, uh, Mr. Santosh Kumar Sarangi, who is also chairman National, Inst uh, uh, National Council for Teacher Education and also additional secretary. I welcome you, sir, to discuss about this uh, seminar objectives and why we, are, uh, we have assembled here. Thank you, Professor Sharma. My colleagues from the ministry, Vipin Kumarji, Mr. Varding, Mr. Shubhankar, the panelist in today's session, Professor Ambast, Professor Arora, and Professor Nagendra, and a whole lot of officials from the state government and other institutions which from which you have joined today. I extend my hearty compliments and best wishes to all of you on the occasion 
of International Literacy Day 2021. This celebration of the Inter International Literacy Day has been going on under the aegis of National Literacy Mission from 1988 onwards. And this is a celebration which is not merely celebrating the attainment of literacy by a person but is celebrating the empowerment of individuals because literacy and empowerment are two very closely connected uh, issues and literacy paves the way for empowerment. If we look at UN Sustainable Development Goals then it talks of literacy not merely as roots for ensuring equity and equality but also for ensuring lifelong learning. So one can always question that once we have become literate, we have completed our BA, we have completed our post-graduation, what is the need for lifelong learning? One must keep it in mind that once someone stops learning, once someone stops to explore new ideas, new innovations, then we tend to get fossilized. We tend to stagnate <coughs> and that amounts to disempowering ourselves. So to continue this process of empowering ourselves, to continuously ensure that we remain creative, we remain innovative, it is essential that we continue our process of learning. There should never be a full stop to learning. It is unfortunate that we have still crores of people who are still illiterate or who have not been exposed to the ideas of literacy. Today, in this year's theme for International Literacy Day, we are talking of narrowing the digital divide. And we know that technology today, the availability of a smartphone in the hands of a rural person can actually be very empowering. Using that phone, he can make payments, receive payments, he can do WhatsApp chat, he can send pictures and there are a whole lot of opportunities which we can do by using or by bridging the digital divide. So today's theme is very apt, especially in the backdrop of a pandemic which has been continuing since one and a half years and which has disrupted the normal lifestyle. And this disruption has forced all of us to look at new ways creative ways, innovative ways to overcome the challenges. So while sitting at home, how do we carry out our business? While sitting at home, how do we carry out our studies? While sitting at home, how do we make payments and receive payments? So there are ways in which the pandemic has forced us to bridge the digital device and has also in the process empowered people who may not have learned in the traditional conventional way. They have learned new methods, they have learned new mechanisms of transacting their business, of overcoming challenges of their daily life. We have seen that no country has really been developed without being literate. Within our country, we have seen the example of states like Kerala, Himachal Pradesh, which have shown significant improvement in indicators human development indicators and they have achieved this by ensuring that 95% and above population of their state are literate. So this is a lesson which comes from within our country and this should inspire all of us to strive towards ensure, ensuring full literacy in all our respective states. With this message, I would like to compliment all of you again and extend my best wishes on International Literacy Day and hope that the expert views of the panelists today and subsequent uh, deliberation on this will help us in furthering our goals of literacy in our country. Thank you all.
Thank you very much, sir. And uh, before our eminent speakers speak, I would like to discuss about the objectives of uh, this webinar. And it will be a short uh, presentation of uh, seven to 10 minutes. Yeah, topic of the uh, today's webinar is uh, digital literacy for youth and adults. And uh, about the webinar, if we webinar, if we uh, try to see its uh, proper horizon, it's a day-long web uh, webinar, and uh, theme will be digital literacy for uh, youths and adults. And to mark International Literacy Day celebrations, this webinar has been organized, and it it will be highlighting the importance of literacy for dignity and human rights, making more liberate and sustainable literate and sustainable society. And rationale for this webinar is in pursuance of UN Sustainable Goals, that is Millennium 2030 Goals, and Goal 4 depicts International Literacy Day 2021 is also celebrated under this theme. And the theme is Literacy for a Human-Centered Recovery, Narrowing the Digital Divide, as uh, Mr. Sarangi AS has also described. The NEP 2020 encourage leveraging digital technology for learning and narrowing the digital divide and also making technology enabled literacy learning inclusive and meaningful. Objectives of the webinar which we see through on this forum to aware youth and adults of uh, the importance of literacy and digital skills for a human centers recovery and to generate ideas for remaining literacy teaching and learning that integrate literacy and digital skills to identify concrete ways in which governments and partners can collaborate to promote technology enabled literacy programs when we talk about digital literacy, I, uh, the following points may be uh, taken care of. Ability to navigate through various digital platforms for a meaningful communication and transaction. Finding information, online safety skills, digital culture, critical thinking, functional and financial literacy, and also digital social responsibility. Uh, when we talk about transition from traditional online learning, we can see uh, it caters 21st century learning skills, digital tools and skills, and innovative course content. And when we see the relevance of digital literacy, it facilitates educational and professional opportunities, develop proficiency and fluency with the tools of technology, communication, and collaboration. Here we can see digital literacy to digital fluency, and we have to move towards digital literacy to digital fluency. You can see uh, on the slide that information literacy, media literacy, social media literacy, networking literacy, and ethical literacy come under the domain of digital literacy. And when we talk about digital skills, it caters critical thinking, communication, creativity, collaboration under the four Cs. And then when uh, we talk about digital fluency, there are seri uh, se uh, se um, several features that talk about media fluency, information fluency, creative fluency, networking fluency, that is also direly needed these days, and then ethical fluency. Uh, next is reference to National Education Policy 2020. Uh, as I said that this whole uh, practice, the whole exercise is based on the recommendation of National Education Policy 2020 to become good, successful, innovative, adaptable, and productive human being in today's rapidly changing world. Then digital literacy, coding, and computational thinking. Uh, this is a very important word, computational thinking, how we can encourage encourage our students, our learners to be part of this kind of uh, skill. Then critical life skills, financial literacy, commercial skills, healthcare and awareness, childcare and education, then 
family welfare. Uh, when we see digital initiative, National Institute of Open Schooling has uh, started different initiatives to cater the need of today's uh, digital era, where learners are uh, work, um, uh, ready to getting ready to learn through uh, this kind of virtual education, extensive use of ICT through Pradhan Mantri Gramin Digital Shaksharta Abhiyan. Uh, it is a very ambitious project of India. Then Swayam, Access, Equity and Quality. It is also a part of these kind of digital literacy. Then a separate vertical Diksha, Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing of PM Evidya, involving e-content and QR-coded energized books. Then an interactive web radio, Mukt Vidyavani, Open Educational Voice. Then NIOS website and YouTube channel that also caters. Uh, this digital education and then ICT based learner support system and special interactions are own web portal, daisy enabled talking books for visually challenged, then state of the art HD studio equipped, ICT based on demand on examination that is on demand examination system, then developed open educational resources in the area of academic and vocational education, then digital mark sheets on DigiLocker, then NIOS open schooling. And data speaks many things in today's scenario. Uh, there are uh, various EPICS bodies, there are various, uh, various researches where Internet and Mobile Association of India reports 33% women uh, have access to Internet as compared to 67% men. The annual status of educational report, only one third of India's school children are pursuing online education, and only 32.5% of this are doing live online cl uh, classes. As per the ASER report by uh, Pratham, only 11% of all the students enrolled in schools were using online classes, while 21.5% were uh, using videos or recorded classes. As per the NSSO data, just 4.4% of rural households in India and 23.4% of urban households own computers while about 70% of the rural population don't. As per a report by Indian Cellular and Electronics Association, ICEA, smartphone users in India would increase to 8 to 9 million by 2022. These data enable us also motivate us to think more in this area. And then challenges are still challenges are there and we are here to just uh, coin the answers. One is digital divide, second is rural urban divide, poor infrastructure, socioeconomic challenges, gender divide, loss of foundational literacy, health risk, lack of digital social responsibility, learning loss have been, we have witnessed learning loss in the uh, pandemic period. Then way forward, which uh, we have to uh, um, coin the answers also, encouraging self-learning. I think this will be the main feature of this uh, webinar. Differentiate between misformation, misinformation and opinion-based content and fact-based content. Then learner generated e-learning content, community participation for narrowing the digital divide, disseminating awareness-based course content and nurturing Netiquette. Netiquette also is a very uh, important word these days, how we have to inculcate etiquettes in our learner, net-based cybersecurity, many other things are there. So it was just a crisp uh, presentation on today's objective. Now I would invite Professor N.K. Ambasht for his presentation. Right, Valiko. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I am beholden to you for such a nice overview of what we are fa facing today. Uh, I would uh, like to dwell how we have uh, moved from uh, what from independence till today. The basic function of adult education was improving functionality in the changing times. If you recall, when we India, India got free, even before that, in 1935, adult education program started in a concerted manner with, with a view to making people literate so that they could uh, handle the 
the demands of a free India. Uh, Government of India Act 1935 uh, stressed that uh, literacy is if you can sign your name in any language, just sign. But later, uh, the idea of basic education evolved and uh, we thought that we have to function in a imminent independent India uh, to play a role of uh, a productive citizen in the uh, free nation. And therefore, uh, the idea was that the content and processes of learning uh, would be to make them aware of what are the responsibility of an adult as a voter, as a citizen of a country, and therefore, social education program was the center of all adult education activities. And uh, social education uh, organizers were posted in each and every block when community development block started in 1952. So uh, these social education officers, um, were organized, social education organizers were charged with the responsibility of uh, coordinating with agriculture, with the other developmental uh, agencies in the government and making people not only aware but also literate. And therefore, the centre of uh, uh, educational programme was uh, learning through need. And here I may refer to Paul Freire, who in South America uh, discussed with the people, illiterate people, and he found that the word interest, that is a, a interest on a principal sum was bothering everybody. So he started with this functional, functional approach in literacy came, and so also in India. The, in 1965 Tehran conference of UNESCO, uh, the functional literacy was made uh, was a great point in which India embarked and green revolution occurred. So the, uh, the IARI, other uh, agricultural universities, etc. were basically charged with producing materials to improve uh, agriculture. But the Directorate of Adult Education at that time, or the uh, was charged with the responsibility of converting those information into readable, simple sentences. And therefore, Kisan Sakshata Yojana, Functional Literacy, uh, Krishi Darshan program through, at that time, television was a new uh, entrant in Indian scenario. And therefore, half an hour of program of Krishi Darshan was also introduced in which the uh, improvement of agriculture. You know, no, during mid-60s, we were in great food crisis. Everyone, uh, every Indian went one, one, missed one meal in a week. I am also a part of that. So, uh, we start, tried to conserve our uh, grains and materials. And during Lal Bahadur Shastri's regime, we refuse to have PL480 program. We will not have that uh, wheat, reject wheat from USA. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, um, we, therefore, the, uh, what I am trying to say that the entire adult education program was geared towards social development, economic development of the people and therefore functionality was doubly, uh, linked with, uh, uh, with e economic development and farmers literacy program. So the content was decided by the need of the society, social need at the time. Now let me, uh, let me take you a little bit uh, backwards. That the question was, at that time, there was uh, this uh, oral uh, 
language that you I speak and you listen and you decode and encode and decode. This was not possible on such a long, uh, large scale. So uh, the script had to be the carrier of communication. The scripts were various in India. Devanagari script, Kannad script, Telugu script, Assamese script, Bengali script, English script. And uh, each, each script was associated with a set of language. So the sound that the script produced communicated a certain meaning to th those people who were conversant with that kind of sound system. A person speaking Odia was not understood in Gujarat because the, 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 it was a mismatch. So uh, <clears throat> literacy, again, the literacy and the script, that is the forming the, uh, uh, the figure was in relation to the context in which we are talking. So I, uh, if I am very conversant, say Hindi, English, but when I go to Japan, I'm not, I'm just as illiterate as anybody else could be. So, uh, now, uh, you see the, how, what kind of scripts uh, uh, prevail today? There are four kinds of uh, languages, Dravidian, proto austroasiatic Austro-Asiatic, and uh, Aryan. Now these are the groups of languages which have emanated from African uh, when in human uh, Neanderthal man came and he migrated different areas, different kind of sound systems were produced and they were standardized. So uh, I will not go into that drum, uh, drum language and <laughs> those kinds of things. But evolution of script and language has a very, very long history and uh, you have to see that your, what you are teaching is in the context of the people around. So the limitation of a language and a script is contained by the, con the physical linguistic boundaries in which it is operative. So the, if, if suppose you are from, in, from Japan, it is not operative in India. Then there are scripts which are, uh, uh, two types of scripts are there. One is hieroglyphic script, where it is pictorial. Mr. Sange referred to um, uh, scripts uh, like Bhim Betka. Uh, wall, wall paintings, etc. They were also communicating. The pictures were communicating. Those kinds of script later developed into Chinese, Japanese. These are hieroglyphic uh, languages. They are called hieroglyphic languages. So those scripts are different. But ours is on phonetic based. Phonemes. So we create sound and the uh, combination of sounds produces a, 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 a kind of meaning which the listener is able to decipher. So listening, speaking and listening are two components of any language. Now this, uh, uh, the, the advent of digital device has come in a, uh, like a boon because it transcends the language barrier of on geographical boundaries. Now you are an Englishman. You you can through your digital device you can work and do in Japan, in China, and anywhere. The basic basic idea the, when it was uh, the language the, the digital language is based on binary system zero one zero one zero one zero one. It is not an decimal system. So. Uh, the universality of uh, digital language is its added advantage. But at this time, 
next year. Thank you. Next, we, the, the challenge today is that we are in a cusp. We are in a, at a time when it, there is a cusp. The cusp is on two types. One is expanding and discovering the new methods of reaching the masses. The, uh, you see, uh, the challenge before us is to make this uh, instrumental kind of thing, this instrument of which you call a, a, a mobile or a, or a laptop or whatever it is, to make it available to everyone. It is different from the voice, which I was endowed by nature. Which I was endowed by nature, so I could make guttural sounds or uh, different kinds of sounds which would make some sense. So here the problem is not of the sound which is naturally endowed by me, but I have to acquire that skill. So this is uh, uh, the, the expanding sources. The advantage is that there is expanding sources of knowledge. <coughs> that knowledge is no more limited to the school teacher or to the textbook. It can be acquired from anywhere. So the center of uh, 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 center of, uh, I would say, um, focus on, not on learning, but how to learn. How to learn and from where from to learn. So that textbook is no more the only source of uh, uh, learning. You can acquire, uh, acquire knowledge from anywhere, any, from plethora of uh, uh, sources that you have. The second point that I want to make that literacy and education are two different things, although very in intrinsically connected. One can be illiterate, but one can be very educated. One must understand this, that literacy is a career of education, no doubt about it. But education and literacy are not so, uh, so intrinsically related that one, one can do without literacy. And with this digital, uh, in this digi digital age, there is a possibility for that and we have to look for that. I may not be able to hold a pen and write, make a curve and a straight line, but I, ha I have the skill of tapping the uh, keyboard and getting what I want to do. So if I can recognize the al alphabets and I can uh, make a meaning out of uh, a group of alphabets, then I am, as well educated, I may not be able to hold my pen, I may not be able to like literacy or something like that. So literacy is a tool for education, no doubt about it, but just a minute. The skill of holding pen, holding a pen, how you type. You recognize the shape, you put a, put a tap on it and your work is done. So deciphering is there, cognition will remain, but the movement in forming lines and curves is replaced by tip, uh, tapping the keyboard. The new algorithm of digital education will have to be provided, propagated, learned. We are in a transition period. And this due demand on, uh, uh, on the teacher is a perplexing kind of thing. He will have to adjust to this kind of uh, earlier. Uh, I was saying, Mr. Uh, uh, what's your good name, sir? Uh, Mr. Worthing had a beautiful handwriting, but his handwriting may not be relevant uh, in this digital era because everybody is typing. So if my, I have a bad handwriting, just to finish, just, just, to, just to finish. One second. So, handwriting is no more important. Then I will I'll skip to the road ahead. Okay? The digital literacy is on mission mode, linking and or integrating with common service centers. Now, why I'm, I have skipped one, 
um, slide. This morning in Daily Telegraph, they quoted me in context of yesterday's lecture of the Prime Minister, in which he he showed confidence of bridging the gap of people who do not have access to mobile or this and and some papers newspapers today came up like hindustan time came uh, came up with a, a very bleak picture of the ground situation in their editorials uh, referring to mr dries's uh, uh, report but the sample that mr dries's report says is very very small 1400 respondent for the such a big country like india with has millions and millions of people so this kind of thing is will not do but i am uh, what i am saying is simple that uh, we have a challenge of uh, bridging the cusp areas the way. one last point that i want to make can we can we make use of common service centers can we make use of common service centers until such time that we are able to provide the digital gadgets to the to all people and number two that can we uh, develop some cheaper modes of uh, this is smartphones and these kinds of things so that it is accessible to everyone thank you very much Thank you very much, sir. And you very well depicted about the journey from uh, scripts, languages, and then the modern era where we are discussing about gadgets and also digital divide. Now, I would like to invite Professor N. Singh, who is Dean Research, Regional Institute of Education, Ajmer, and also Convener, Board of Studies, Maharshi Dayanand Saraswati University, Ajmer. I welcome you, uh, Professor Singh. Professor Singh, please uh, go ahead. Can you hear us? Uh, please unmute yourself. Professor Singh, please unmute yourself. We'll go to Pro Professor Pankaj Roda. We'll come back to him. Presentation start here, so it means he's there. Just for आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर होस्ट है अनम्यूटेड जी थैंक यू शिक्षक पर्व के इस पावन अवसर व अंतर्राष्ट्रीय साक्षरता दिवस पर आज के सत्र के अध्यक्ष श्रीमान संतोष सारंगी जी अतिरिक्त सचिव शिक्षा विभाग भारत सरकार समादरणीय प्रोफेसर सरोज शर्मा जी अध्यक्ष एन आई ओ एस शिक्षाविद एवं चिंतक प्रोफेसर एन के एम सर आज के सत्र के वक्ता 
और शिक्षा जगत से जुड़े सभी साधु जनों को मेरा सादर अभिनंदन आज के थीम पर चर्चा प्रारंभ करने से पूर्व मैं आप सभी का ध्यान इस ओर आकर्षित करना चाहूंगा कि जब कभी भी इस दौर का इतिहास लिखा जाएगा तो दो बातें पर चर्चा अवश्य होगी इंक्लूजन और इंफ्यूजन क्योंकि इस दौर में इंक्लूजन एंड इंफ्यूजन खास तौर पर शिक्षा के क्षेत्र के लिए तो बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण क्षेत्र है इंक्लूजन वेन आई से रिगार्डिंग द सोशल आस्पेक्ट ऑल दिच है listed down by professor sarva sharma ji and when i talk about infusion i mean content pedagogy or technology in tino ka infusion ka daur hai mera agrah hai ki theme se sambandhit mudde sarokar aur bharat sarkar dwara ki gayi pehlon ko is drishtikon se bhi dekha jaye is sat ka labh uthate hue mauke ka main प्रोफेसर सरोज शर्मा अध्यक्ष एन को बहुत बहुत मुबारकबाद देना चाहूंगा कि सुबह का सत्र में जब सुन रहा था अनिता कारवाल मैडम से पता लगा इंटरनेशनल लिटरेसी डे अवार्ड एन ने आपके निर्देशन में कार्यरत सभी फैकल्टी और स्टाफ के सौजन्य से प्राप्त किया उसकी बहुत बहुत बधाई नाउ कमिंग डाउन टू इश्यूज बहुत सारे मुद्दे हैं सभी लोग डिजिटल लिटरेसी को वेबसाइट्स पे भी अवेलेबल है दुनिया भर का साहित्य इससे संबंधित है लेकिन मैं सिर्फ आपका ध्यान इन इन पांच मूल तय मुद्दों पे आकर्षित करना चाहूंगा पहला अपने आप में डिजिटल लिटरेसी ये स्वयं एक बहुत बड़ा इशू है नीडलेस टू से देर आर नंबर ऑफ थिंकर्स and authors and writers and researchers those who have tried to reflect on uh, especially if i refer to the elwin toffler the futurist i would like to refer here while discussing modern technology including digital evolution communication evolution with emphasis on their effect on cultures worldwide he has also tried to point out which has been quoted many times at many places the illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn these are the things which really i also often think about the definition is changing the historical perspective of adult education has been already shared by professor and ke ambassador with all of us the second issue is to my mind the analog to digital fast conversation but slow transition and we had to achieve the targets laid down in front of us by the nep 2020 the third one is thin population of techno savvy net savvy and info savvy how to bridge the gap between the digital divide number of parameters and dimensions and things have been already shared by shriman santosh singhari ji atrik sachin needless to <coughs> repeat them again the next is digital learning resources and slow pace he has also reflected on this the next is comprehensive teacher profile i am more concerned about this as a teacher as a researcher comprehensive teacher profile for inclusive education in digital age i think many of the organization at national level state level are really working on it how to cope up with all these issues and the concerns are courses and programs on digital technology number 2 professional development programs for teachers on digital technology then third which is more important for me the management information system in all the educational institutions right from admission to certification i think nios has already taken a lead in this direction also to work upon the ict based on demand examination system 
technology culture in education institutions and more important is mous which are going to be signed between technical agencies and apex educational institutions they are going to also have some effect on this and the last is developmental challenges and techno determinism on the basis of this i have tried to prepare a flow chart to share with all of you the policy implementation and research should go hand in gloves together and at the ministerial level the cape under the cable guidance of the secretary mou all these national institutions like ours ncert nepa cin cifl nios etc will definitely take care of these things at national level then state level the scrts and department of education and sis district level the district resource units at the dites and block level the brcs and crcs and village level education committees and school management committees this flow chart i just want to share with you the at one time the ministry asked me what are the consultation mechanisms between the institutions and within the institutions now i think this area is also to be explored and researched on a, a taking into account the digital literacy program how the consultation mechanism are being urged. now initiatives for narrowing the digital divide to achieve 21st century skills i would like to draw your attention to number of times which has been pointed out and raised by our prime minister skill scale and speed these three as we had to definitely keep in mind when we are trying to infuse the content pedagogy and technology at the same time the strong and innovative government initiatives have already been uh, taken up with these five e's which were also pointed out at one time the enrollment equity and inclusion excellence employability and entrepreneurship now on the basis of this all we can go for the outstanding curriculum framework for adult education which can be developed for digital literacy and numeracy basic education vocational skills and beyond by these four approaches i think professor ambash will recall when well, this is on the basis of my experience in learning i am sharing with you we at the time of 80s when we were trying to lay our hands on the alternative systems <clears throat> we came out with these approaches four approaches mainly on the basis of research number one the curriculum should be based on formal curriculum outstanding learning outcome should be developed number two condensed version number 3 integrated curriculum number 4 partially integrated curriculum this will include five types of programs with clearly defined learning outcomes for fundamental digital literacy and numeracy critical life skills vocational skill development and continuing education the details of this have already been uh, shared by us avet shriman shringi sahab these issues and concerns to be attained through recognizing the paradigm shift because we are experiencing in the field of education and teacher education specifically there is a paradigm shift from teaching to learning but at the same time because of this technology and the pandemic has really worked as a catalyst to learn or shift on the more effective and powerful uh, system of e learning so there is a system number 1 from linear to hyper media learning we are shifting number 2 learning how to navigate and learn this have been placed in front of us by professor ambash also number 3 instruction to discovery problem solving and construction number 4 teacher instruction center to learner center and developmental changes and technological determinism these two things we had to keep in mind and try to work on the areas which i have listed to share with you number 1 we had to 
develop the media culture instead of crowd culture and learning for equitable education for all bridging the gap between public and private dichotomy and this can be only achieved through partnership and to sustain the multicultural multilingual multinational networking by creating national educational technological forum through digital literacy for youth and adult to build a social foundation for human centered recovery integrated literacy and digital skills to attain all this then i'll refer to these five c we had to say regarding the infusion the contact connect collaborate coordinate and cooperate by ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education to promote lifelong learning and stellar initiatives have already been taken and institutions are working for the ebullient programs of government of india say for example pradhan mantri gramin digital sakshatra abhiyan ek missionary spirit mein is abhiyan ko liya gaya and nis ne virtual open schooling ko kiya then aaj indian sign language jiski charcha madam ne ki uske dictionary bhi launch ki gayi and aaj hi talking books of ncert nishtha 3 on vidyanjali 2 portal ka bhi zikr aaya main samajhta hu इन सब के ऊपर हमें ध्यान देना है एंड प्लान एंड प्रोग्राम हैज ऑलरेडी बीन लेड डाउन बाय सार्थक पार्ट वन एंड टू ऑफ एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दी टास्क आर ऑलरेडी बीन असाइन एग्जिस्टिंग ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म्स लाइक दीक्षा एंड स्वयं आर टू बी एक्सटेंडेड एंड डिजिटल रिपोजिटरी ऑफ कोर्स वर्क सिमुलेशन गेम बेस्ड लर्निंग ऑगमेंटेड रियलिटी एंड वर्चुअल रियलिटी के बीच में उनके बारे में समझ विकसित करना ये शायद हमारे लिए जरूरी है देन डेवलपिंग वर्चुअल लैब्स जो अटल टिंकरिंग लैब्स के भी स्थापना कई विद्यालयों के अंदर की गई और उस और भी मैं आप लोगों का ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहूँगा कि एआई के लिए आगे क्या किया जाए इसके डिजिटल लिटरेसी फॉर यूथ एंड एडल्ट्स का कवरिंग आउट ऑफ स्कूल यूथ एंड एडल्ट्स के लिए भी मैंने एक फ्लो चार्ट डेवलप करने का प्रयास किया था जो मैं आपके साथ शेयर करना चाहता हूं और जी सबके साथ मैं एक बार फिर आप सभी का उन्हें आभार व्यक्त करता हूं धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत मुझे ये अवसर प्रदान करने के लिए थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्रोफेसर सिंह आपने फ्लो चार्ट के द्वारा सभी एपिक्स बॉडीज के काम को दर्शाया और उसके साथ साथ मंत्रालय और विभिन्न एपिक्स बॉडीज के क्या इनिशिएटिव रहे हैं और वर्तमान में क्या नवाचार हो रहे हैं उस पर भी आपने बहुत अच्छे से प्रकाश डाला आपका बहुत बहुत आभार और साइन लैंग्वेज की महत्ता को आपने जिस तरीके से किया और लिटरेसी में वो भी एक महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका अदा कर रहा है और निश्चित रूप से हम इस दिशा में आगे बढ़ेंगे नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट प्रोफेसर पंकज अरोरा ही इज प्रोफेसर इन सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ऑल्सो ही इज लुकिंग आफ्टर आई एल 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 इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्निंग इन डेली यूनिवर्सिटी ही इज डायरेक्टर ओवर देयर वेलकम प्रोफेसर अरोरा थैंक यू celebration of international literacy day and under the celebration shikshak parv this is celebration of it's a festival of teachers and teaching and such initiatives can be expected only at this time when teachers are actually given their due regard and respect in the society friends today is the day for international literacy day and my previous speakers professor ambish and professor singh has already set the tone for discussions i am grateful to professor sarangi ji shri vipin kumar ji sagosh sharma ji for giving me this opportunity where i shall be discussing my ideas on digital literacy for youth and adults 
professor sarov sharma in her opening remarks suggested the period of initial civilization when we were writing on walls through paintings also and professor ambesh has suggested through music also we are communicating to the people now it is the period of it revolution 21st century it skills which is demanding artificial intelligence competencies as well as robotic science we are talking of coding for programs remember we are started with era of initial civilization when writing on caves what professor sarov sharma has mentioned and now we are in the era when we are doing lot of coding and coding is becoming a crazy a phenomena in market because lot of software engineers are into it and earning their livelihood through it so this whole concept is now motivating us to think of now bringing digital literacy to the masses now it is the high time especially with this pandemic era and epidemic uh, scenario across the country across the world we are into the mode when we should be promoting digital literacy among masses first i would like to suggest what do we understand what is the literal meaning of digital literacy this is an ability to find to evaluate utilize to share and to create content using information technology this is a definition by digital literacy dot coursera education now digital literacy is also an ability to interpret and design nuanced communication across fluid digital forums this refers to the evolving digital and social media applications which include search engines which we all are using the google bubble is very popular across academia as well as social forums lot of blogs interactive blogs which we all are using to make our academic institutions a vibrant and all time available to the people facebook social media and other things to add to the list this digital literacy involves critical engaging with technology and developing social awareness of how a number of factors including commercial agendas and cultural understanding the i think the focus should be on cultural understanding which can shape the ways in which technology is used and convey information and help people to draw their own meaning out of it it also means being able to communicate and represent knowledge in different context the in the previous point i was suggesting the cultural understanding which is giving a new dimension uh, the tribal the urban the rural the uh, the friends here who are present from adult education department nowadays uh, since 1993s united nations has redefined it in the context of lifelong learning and as a student of education i have understood that education itself is a lifelong process so education is not a destination it's not a manzil where we want to reach but it's a process professor ambesh has beautifully explained the difference between literate and educated so we all want to be educated literacy is only a mean so mean is also important but the destination the manzil is more critical this involves finding and selecting relevant information google baba is giving flood to um, you type any keyword and you got multiple points there now it's up to your ability and your understanding how you select relevant information how you identify critical understanding out of the context which you are reading or you are referring to and then you are recontextualizing this knowledge in the and is under underpinned by the understanding of cultural and social context uh, repeatedly i am using this word cultural and social context because the context which is there on the digital world is largely western and european so whenever we are referring to any digital text we must be referring to indian context which is uh, indian socio and cultural aspects now this uh, in short digital learning means constellation of life skills this is again a definition as proposed by hobbs in 2010 nep's 20 chapter 24 is dedicated to online and digital education ensuring equitable use of technology 
these new circumstances in the present world specifically as sarangi sir in uh, in the beginning has mentioned that this epidemic and pandemic period which is existing for last one and half years has also pushed us towards this digital world and helped us acquiring those competencies whether we are students or we are teachers it's also there are alternative modes of quality education wherever and whatever traditional modes of in person or uh, online modes what is the nature of digital literacy this uh, when we talk of nature of digital literacy it means becoming comfortable using digital technologies using information technologies so we need to prepare our primary school students as well as a adult who is working as a marketer and executive as an accountant as a social thinker as a writer as a homemaker we all need to be digitally comfortable using those technologies we should be effectively using appropriate technology this is more important we all should not be jumping on the advanced ways of technologies but we should be identifying appropriate technology developing its infrastructure and trying to make a respectful and safe use for all of us whatever domain we are working with then we i want to discuss a brief point about the scope of digital literacy scope is unlimited it is touching all aspects all domains of human life it is encompassing the terms and its scope is in fact almost all uh, the uh, domain all the areas of human life with different applications and softwares we are trying to help and finding a job or a partner using household appliances to booking theater or cinema tickets holidays and getting the best deal possible all these things are there in uh, there is a scope and what are the components of digital literacy it has certain components most of them have already been discussed and mentioned so i will not be going into detail of these com uh, different components of digital literacy now why this is important for young people now young people are increasingly en engaging themselves with new technologies they are masters they are teachers of older generation in context of digital education so they are into this world of practicing and exploiting the new space the youth is getting into it with more meaningful digital literacy meaning and enabling youth people young people to deal with some of the associated risk also i will not be reading each point but i want to mention that young people because world is theirs next 30 40 years they are the india has already become it guru in the world so we need to bring it at all levels of schooling as well as university education now importance of digital education it help us taking learning everywhere it help us getting engaged with the peers at this forum i can get engaged myself with my students with my peers through my whatsapp messages through my facebook upload and there may be certain interactive blogs i just want to mention sir Uh, as a student of political science whatever ba ba teachers i prepare i stay with them connected to a interactive blog civics.blogspot.com through this interactive blog my 15 year students are still day in touch whether they are working in india or outside india whether they are working for formal sector or informal sector they keep posing their experiences experiments and challenges and sometime not necessarily i am responding to them they can keep interacting among themselves so this is an important forum which help us get engaged with the peers and align this is inclusive intrusions uh, yeah i will be taking in next one and half minute or two minutes this is true sense inclusive and barrier free it decreases behavioral issues it has a constant connection with teachers and work at your own pace your own time your own space these are this other beautiful aspects of um, digital education uh, i'll skip this slide because it is talking of why we should be more careful about digital literacy in 21st century but i surely would like you to go through a quick glance what university of delhi where i am teaching for last 24 years is doing in context of promoting digital education among masses 
University of Delhi has instituted Institute of Lifelong Learning in the year 2007. And vision of this Institute of Lifelong Learning is to promote e-content, MOOCs, and other digital forms of education among masses. DU Discard is a new project where I am given the responsibility as a chairperson. Here we are trying to provide digital infrastructural support to all the colleges and all the departments of University of Delhi. So I think DU is first in it of its kind, which is trying to develop, which is trying to make independent all departments and colleges in context of digital infrastructure. One DU is another initiative. I am just sharing it as an example. Uh, other educational institutions can take lead from this. One DU is a forum where we are trying to centralize all e-learning resources. If my son, who is in class 10th, is trying to find some good lesson on, say, energy, he may have 20 resources for that. But what are the best sources and where all these are available? So one DU is an initiative to bring different uh, forums on one platform and organize it systematically so it should be learner friendly. SOL School of Open Learning and Campus of Open Learning are two other forums through which we are promoting. Uh, sir, it is a, a matter of pride to share with the house that University of Davis SOL is catering to 3.5 lakh students across the country. And I think 50% of Delhi University strength lies in School of Open Learning. And we are able to cater to them quality education of University of Delhi through digital forums only. Digital forums University of Delhi is using at length. So these are a few things. My last point, which I would show, uh, like to discuss and I am trying to promote it, that digital literacy need to be promoted to minimize digital divide. And we must be working towards making right to technology as an integral part of right to education. If we want to promote digital education and if we want to uh, increase GER, gross enrollment ratio from 26% to 50% in next 15 years. So digital world is the solution and right to technology should be associated with right to education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Arora. So uh, next 15 minutes uh, will be for question answer session. And I have received a uh, few questions for our experts from uh, listeners. So uh, uh, first question is to Professor Ambasht. And the question is, can there be voice-based solutions to add pace to literacy? It will be better if the voice-based solutions are in the local language. What is your take, sir? Well, uh, thank you. This is a very uh, nice question. Now, reading and writing a sentence uh, is slowly giving way to typing on the already written alphabets. So, the day is not far off when you speak and that is conveyed through telephone, through other media, and the listener understands. So you are obviating the skill of writing. Imagine that by 20, 2100, would you be moving your hands and uh, using the pen or tapping this? The kind, the kind of uh, leap that we are taking in technological development would be that uh, Whatever you speak is stored in ether. Cloud computing is already there. So the day is not far off. So wise based is, yes, certainly it is, a, it is a kind of alternative, but it is a futuristic vision. You can see that the uh, wise is, uh, is stored in the ethereal, uh, I would say, atmosphere, much above the atmosphere. So how are we going to retract it, even in the posterior generation? What has been said 200 years ago can be seen, but that is a prospect. I, I, I don't know. I have no answer for that at this moment. But yes, communication, as far as the adult education component is concerned, you communicate to the person and he understands. The basic, the only idea of language is to, that you articulate, you make some sound and somebody listens to that sound and he deciphers it in his brain. There is a, 
wave here, it goes here and it, it the brain processes it and tries to find meaning and then associate it. Yes. So this is the basic uh, uh, function of language. Now where there was no wise situation, just uh, just half a minute. You see, earlier we had those, uh, when the societies migrated from uh, African countries and continental drift taken, took place, then they wanted to communicate from the people who had moved away. And then they had this drum, drum kind of thing, relay, relay message. I beat a drum, it is heard somewhere, it is again repeated and repeated, on which the basis the telegram Morse system came. Then came telegram, telephone, then came radio, then the uh, satellite messages. So this is, uh, their possibility is immense. Thank you. And again, uh, next question is uh, to you. Uh, how the visually impaired and hard of hearing people of our society can be benefited by the digital literacy? Uh, well, uh, you have already, I yes. must comment and I will, you have done uh, sign language as a, as a subject, you are de developing it, there, is a, there are answers. And digital literacy, I mean, the, if you uh, have your keyboard, on braille system, then you can have a, you can type and it will be translated. So, so the, talking books are also talking there. books are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the next question is to Professor uh, N K Singh. Professor Singh, can you hear us? Doctor Nagel Singh, are you able yes, to please. hear us? Yeah, this yes, question please. is to you. Yeah, this question is to you. How can NETF ensure a mechanism of curriculum for students with learning disorders? Madam, when we are talking about the inclusive education as such, which is mm -hmm. part of achieving or attaining the quality in the entire education system, I specifically try to mention here during this pandemic period, it has been brought our notice by the international agencies also that 10 million children of so-called as developing countries or the countries where the wages are low out of schools. And there is a specifically mention about the uh, special children or children with require special attention and disabled. For them, definitely, I think we have got a number of programs which are already being taken care of by NCRT and NIOS, both. Uh, I think you can better answer than me on these uh, things. You know. Thank you very much. I think I yes, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you. Professor Singh. And uh, Professor Arora, next question is to you. I think between you and us, what is the difference between one day you and Diksha? Very interesting question. <laughs> one day. Uh, uh, one day you is a initiative at, by a local organization, by a single university, where we have tried to collate all the resources, e-learning resources, at one platform. And not only bringing them, uh, just uh, clubbing them, but integrating them in the form of uh, helping students relate it with different themes and topics and subtopics of curriculum applicable in University of Delhi, whether this is CBCS curriculum or learning outcome based curriculum framework. So that is there. And Diksha is a national platform where people are not only posting and preparing e-content, but also uh, LOC of this curriculum is common between the two, whether it's Diksha or whether it is one deal. So my point was like, if universities take initiative and, um, and collate things from national resources to meet their local needs for their own students, so it would be a great help to young people who are not that educated on digital platforms and they have been pushed on it because of pandemic also and because of 
multiple factors which are working at the moment. So just to minimize digital divide, this initiative has been taken by University of Delhi. Thank you. A next question to you uh, again. Can the DU DISCAD shown on slide 11 be extended to schools and institutions in the rural areas for the benefit of the unreached group of the society? Um, very well, uh, I don't take it as a question. And why this suggestion. has not been extended till now? Yeah, I, I take it as a suggestion uh, because DU DISCAD is a, a local project, again, uh, initiative of University of Delhi to empower and to uh, uh, provide digital infrastructure to all the colleges and uh, this, this you can take as an experiment which University of Delhi has taken up and gradually it can be expanded through, through school education boards and other universities to meet the... I agree strongly with this question, uh, whosoever is asking it, that this, uh, such initiatives need to be taken up by the school boards and universities working and catering to the uh, remote area, remote parts of the country. So that is very, very important. That is why my last slide was talking of uh, right to technology should become part and parcel of right to education. So when we are uh, talking of uh, increasing GER and higher education, then we need to think of right to technology as integral part of right to education. Thank you. Today we have a very uh, key person uh, of this area, Shri Vipin Kumarji is with us and is looking after uh, literacy and adult education and giving very well shape to the uh, to this particular field. So I invite you for a vote of thank, uh, vote of thanks, please. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Professor Saroj Sharma. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank. Uh, uh, sir, sir uh, because uh, he took uh, time out of his busy, busy schedule and then uh, agreed to chair the session uh, on this international literacy day. Uh, in fact, uh, we have been working together for last more than one month uh, on the six Akbar celebration also, which will continue till 17th of September. Sir, uh, you also mentioned in your opening remarks uh, regarding the importance of digital initiatives, especially during, during pandemic. And uh, rightly you said that literacy is the emp uh, empowerment of individuals. So I think, sir, uh, means uh, we will just look uh, and we'll try and we'll uh, try our best actually in days to come that uh, during pandemic, how we can uh, bridge this learning gap and we'll look into these aspects which you have suggested. Mm, Professor Saro Sarma uh, means she is the person uh, behind helping adult education division in Ministry of Education uh, to develop online modules. Ma'am, uh, thanks for joining us today uh, and uh, for giving a nice presentation also. At the same time, I'd like to congratulate you for uh, this uh, UNESCO award this year. And again, you have worked very hard. Mm, you especially mentioned that uh, different digital initiatives which NIS is uh, working upon actually and they are doing. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Ambust also who is a uh, uh, retired chairperson in NIS and he in fact shared his thought about how the adu adult education program evolved from uh, before nine means uh, our freedom independence days also and uh, what is the relation of a script and uh, with the literacy. Uh, the difference between literate and educated uh, needs to be um, understood. Uh, I'd like to thank Professor Nagendra Singh, um, who joined us uh, online from Azmer, um, from NCRT. And what are the issues and the concern with the digital literacy uh, you explained in detail. Uh, thank you, Professor Singh. Um, I would like to thank Professor Pankaj Roda also, uh, Miss you explained uh, in detail the initiatives of DU, uh, that platform and uh, Miss we were thinking that we are having Diksha platform, but we are not aware that there is one more, play, uh, one more platform, we will uh, uh, surely explore that uh, platform and we are planning for a new scheme of uh, adult education. Mm, 
the details of uh, digital literacy uh, and uh, what are the scopes of digital literacy you shared very well thank you professor ora uh, i'd like to thank my officers my team from uh, the ministry and uh, they also worked very hard to make this event a big success uh, the questions and the quality and the type of questions which we got during this seminar it shows that the people and the uh, stakeholders who were listening us they also liked us and especially that question which was asked from professor ora so he also i think may be amused that really uh, the so i would like to thank my listeners also who joined us today and uh, we are coming up with a new policy uh, new scheme in fact uh, of adult education and as our uh, professor ambast also said that uh, uh, the difference between literate and uh, educate means there is a difference so now it is time uh, that we need not to make the people literate but we need to make them educated people actually and that's why in the new education policy along with fln we have added few more components critical life skills vocational education basic equivalency etc and uh, means when we got the independence in 1947 the literacy rate was around 18% in 2011 the last official data this literacy rate is 72% uh, means we have gone up from 18 to 72% but still around 24 crore people are illiterate they were illiterate in 2011 after that around 7 crores people they have been added uh, and they have got the certification also from nius but a long way is to go at means uh, by 2030 the sdg goal 4.6 is that we have to have 100% literacy so i think that now the time has come when digital literacy will have to play very important role and by using that uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, book and that primer uh, we are not going to achieve that target so the budget announcement also especially mentions this year that we will have to develop online modules for adult education so in this whole concept i would like to thank all the speakers the chairperson sarangi sir also uh, who took time and the listeners the officers everybody all stakeholders and uh, we just are very hopeful and we think that in days to come we will try to achieve and we will achieve in fact that goal of uh, 100% literacy and use of digital technology is going to be very crucial in these days thank you thank you the chair we come to end of uh, this session thank you all thank you for joining the session